you know, late 1980s, early 1990s was an interesting time for uh, young teenage girls and young gay men across the world because there was a lot of hard jobs that uh, drew recognition just around the time of 90210, various uh, shows that were celebrating the, the beauty of young uh, men and women in the, in the Hollywood TV and movie industry. But there was one person that really stood out, and he's now retired from acting. But at the time he came out, everybody from two to 102 were talking because this guy at the time was the most handsome man in the world in my basic opinion and Elvis look alike uh, but uh, with a little bit more charisma if that's hard to believe all the uh, movies and shows he uh, he was in he was well known for playing Elvis in numerous productions but he was he had a, something of a Sal Mineo, Tony Curtis little bit of Jeffrey Hunter in him and like I said he really shook everybody up, no pun intended. Now, Michael St. Gerard, born in New York Mills, New York, on January 22, 1981, uh, uh, began appearing on the small screen in Japanese commercials and off-Broadway shows as early as the mid-1980s. His first movie, of course, was the now classic uh, first big movie, now classic John Waters film, Hairspray, which he played uh, one of the main characters that uh, Ricky Lake's uh, lead uh, lead lady was had a big affection on. You know, in Baltimore, talking about segregation, uh, getting the uh, dance united the blacks and the whites. A very good movie, uh, still holds up. Divine should have won Best Supporting, but that's another that's another podcast altogether. Now. This is what really happened. In 1989, he starred in two movies in which he portrayed Elvis Presley. Heart of Dixie, which included Ali Sheedy and uh, a whole bunch of uh, top uh, uh, actresses and actors. And of course, the Dennis Quaid uh, biopic, uh, where he played Jerry Lee Lewis in Great Balls of Fire. The famous scene where Elvis's girlfriend in the bed is gyrating to uh, Jerry Lee while Jerry Lee was playing. Now, his portrayal of Elvis in both films led him to being cast a third time as a young Elvis in the underrated 1990 TV series Elvis, where he appeared in all of the episodes. Now, ten episodes of the series were broadcast, three were never broadcast. He also served uh, as Elvis's mirror image in the penultimate episode of Quantum Leap in 1993, something called Memphis uh, Melody. So, we're going to look a little bit, a bit at the Elvis series, and I think I think it's very important to note that uh, Priscilla Presley was the producer of it, obviously. Uh, Elvis's beautiful ex-wife uh, knew more about uh, the king than probably anybody else. Now, the Elvis uh, show was also subtitled Good Rockin' Tonight. is an American drama series about the early life of Elvis Presley that aired on ABC from February 6th until May 1990, 1990 before its cancellation due to, get this, low ratings. Now these uh, 10 episodes along with 3 unaired episodes were edited in a 4 hour miniseries titled Elvis The Early Years. Again, St. Gerard was Presley with Jesse Dabson, Blake Gibbons, Millie Perkins and Billy Greenbush as a strong supporting cast. Elvis voice and pay impersonator Ronnie, McD Ronnie McDowell, a uh, great Elvis uh, tribute artist, one of the best of all time, provided the singing voice for St. Gerard in the series. Now, Elvis Good Rockin' Tonight was a series offering a dramatic recreation of Elvis's time just before becoming a major star, focusing on Elvis in 1954 and 1955 as he was beginning his recording career at Sun Records. Now this uh, the series uh, felt literally like the early chapters of a book on the real life of Elvis. Well done, uh, the presentation was tremendous, St. Gerard really gets into the Elvis style but what's uh, again so scary he looks so much like elvis you don't know where elvis starts of that generation and where he begins is almost like you take the dna of elvis and like i said a little bit of sal Minio and tony curtis in uh, made his uh, physical look now gerard gerard again had played uh, presley twice great balls of fire and heart of dixie now Billy Perkins actually starred as the real Elvis's love interest in a 61 film, Wild in a Country, where he played his mother. And Matt Dillon, of all people, and Scott Valentine of, uh, of uh, Family Ties fame, were the first two choices for the role of Elvis. Now, we all know Kurt Russell did it before, but it was more uh, a physical uh, representation. Kurt looked a little bit like Elvis, but not enough like St. Gerard did. Now... Sure, St. Gerard's audition was a line read and him lip syncing to Baby Let's Play House. He was flown to Memphis the next day to start filming. 
and the brown eyed Sandra Ard refused to wear blue contacts for the role. Now, there's a very, very uh, famous India interview he did on uh, on uh, American uh, TV with uh, with uh, talked about his uh, how he put it all together, how he basically was uh, kind of nervous to uh, do it, and it was on Arsenio Hall. You can still find it on YouTube. But when he walked on, ladies and gentlemen, it's like Elvis came back to life. It was I couldn't believe it. Now at the time I wasn't writing my TV column for my papers in New Brunswick, but I would have. I uh, and I wouldn't. You know what the headline would have been? Elvis lives. Now the episodes uh, include Money, Honey, The Storm, The Locket, Bel Air Breakdown, Hole in the Pocket, Roots, Grand Ole Opry, about the uh, the first time we played in the. Uh, uh, Opry, of course, when he failed. Sun Sessions, Bodyguards, Let It Burn, Moody Blues, uh, Old Man, and The Four Mules. Now, St. Gerard, again, after the Elvis show got cancelled, he decided to take another big role, where he appeared as an acting teacher in the second season of Beverly Hills 90210. He then made a few direct uh, to video films, which included Into the Sun, Livewire, and Replicator. Now, in a shocking announcement, and it took everybody by surprise. In 1994, St. Gerard had a spiritual awakening after leading a Sunday school class and with it decided to retire from acting at age 33 and focus his energies on religious instruction. He subsequently became a pastor in the Harlem area of New York City, extending himself in his church in particular to inner city youths. And, uh, uh, and spends, of, uh, according to published reports, little time reflecting on his past stardom. As of the mid-2000s, he was still working as a pastor at Harlem Square Church, but if you do a YouTube or uh, a Google search, there's not much uh, talk about it. But from what I heard through the grapevine, he's a very uh, decent and uh, uh, still a fine gentleman who uh, is doing what he wants to do. Now, uh, the Elvis series, you could probably find it. There's a, comp and a bunch of compilation YouTube videos on it, but the the tone and the, the aspect of it is quite strong, and I would figure it's the most underrated TV series of the 1990s, it's, but I still don't know why I got low ratings. I don't know what they were expecting, but it is what it is. Elvis, Elvis was Elvis back then. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you're doing here with our vintage TV podcast, let us know what to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're a certain age, if you're a 50-year-old gay man listening to this podcast, yes, yes, sir, we were recognizing the fact that Michael J. Ronald, J. St. Gerard could have become a big gay icon because he was that beautiful, and a gentleman besides. Every gay man or young woman back in the 90s needed uh, someone to, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, enjoy physically and mentally spiritually and uh, you know it's uh, kind of a weird thing he could have been a superstar but he decided to help the Lord and my God go all, all the power to him thanks for listening bye <laughs>